it took them a while, but Kale and Morgana were revealed. And although I can tell you right now that their story is pretty cool. You better wait for the next video, especially if you avoided all spoilers. That one's going to be much bigger. But today we are talking about Kale and Morgana. First of all, we were right. They really do have six wings as we predicted. If you have a look at Morgana, she also does have six wings. A pair on her head, a pair on her butt, and the main pair of wings is actually bound by chains. But that's not all. Not only do we know that Morgana's abilities didn't change at all, Kale changed slightly, and the majority of their skins were remade from the ground up. For example, this is the new Battleborn Kale, Silver Kale, and Unmasked Kale. But we also got their stories already. Now, when I was reading them, I realized that it is a story structured like the story of Victor and Jace. Both champions have a story seen from their point of view, but only if you combine them will you get the full picture. It is exactly the same with Kale and Morgana. At first I thought that I would just go through their stories one by one, but then a lot of you wouldn't make all the cool connections. So instead, I decided to combine the two storylines to give you the best description of what actually happened to them. So with that, let's slowly get into the complete story of Kale and Morgana. Their story begins during the early stages of the Rune Wars, which was a global conflict during which humans figured out how to use the world runes that were scattered across the planet. Unfortunately, the world runes are essentially little keys to the power that created Runeterra, so you can imagine the destruction such power can cause. The rune war spread across both Valran and Shurima, so escaping the conflict was nearly impossible. During these dark times, Mount Targon stood as a beacon of light. Legends say that the Targon's chosen heroes can save humanity from certain destruction. So out of desperation, two Targonians, Mihira and Kilem, decided to test their own fate. They decided to climb the mountain to save their tribe. Even when they learned that Mihira was heavy with a the child, they pressed on. When they reached the mountain summit, a place where Runeterra touches the stars, it was Mihira who was chosen as a divine vessel for the aspect of justice, wielding a sword that blazed with a fire brighter than the sun. Kilem watched his lover from a distance, with both wonder and fear. After that, the couple returned not only with the salvation they sought, but also with twin daughters, Morgana and Kale, one as dark as the other was bright. Interestingly enough, this is the first time we have ever heard about an avatar of an aspect having children. Morgana and Kale were literally born from an aspect's vessel. Although Mihira's powers were more than enough to save their tribe, it also had its dark side. The more she attended her duties, the more her human side began to back away. This is something we observed with Pantheon before. She often shoved her two daughters into Kilem's arms before she leapt away into yet another war. This happened night after night, always abandoning her children to answer battle's call. Just like that, Mihira became a fearsome warrior, greater than any mortal. But Kilem began to fear her new divinity. And on top of that, her celestial light attracted dangerous sorcerers. In fact, they were now in more danger than before. Kilem endured this for many months, but as uncertainty gnawed at him, he came to a realization. The war still raged on countless fronts, and his beloved wife was slipping away. He couldn't just sit around Targon, hoping to avoid danger with his two daughters in arms. He had to act now. So he waited for Mihira to leave once more, and then he fled Targon with both of them. He knew about a place where the land itself offered protection against magic. It was across the Conqueror's Sea. There was a settlement in a region that did not have a name yet. But decades later, it would be known as the Kingdom of Demacia. There, in their new homeland, Kilem raised the twins on his own, their characteristics growing different with each passing day. Kale was precautious, often arguing with the settlement's leaders about their rules. She could do so because she studied the settlement's growing set of laws in her free time. Though she had no real memory of her mother's powers, somehow, as if it was an echo of justice, she knew the laws were meant to keep them all safe. Her father rarely spoke of such things, but Kale was certain Mihira had saved them by ending the rune wars on some distant battlefield. While this sounds like a hint of a future story, right now we don't actually know how the rune wars ended. Morgana on the other hand was the exact opposite. Instead of strictly following the laws, she would rather spend her time talking to people and meeting all the new refugees. During those times, the Petricide Forest became a well-known hideout, so people from all across the globe fled here to save their lives. This became a problem since the new settlement was now accepting everyone, no matter their gender, race or species. So naturally there was a certain distrust among all people. And eventually mages and untrusted individuals were cast out, because they could bring dangers to the others inside. This was the very first spark of the typical Demacian racism. Morgana tried to fight it back, and she often ventured outside their borders, to bring the outcast mages at least some comfort. 
At home, Morgana felt her father's heartbreak at leaving Mihira behind, and she grew bitter at her mother for causing such pain. Morgana also feared that Kale might carry some remnant of the Aspect's power. Her dedication to law and justice was a strong hint after all. But unfortunately, this fear was later confirmed. A blade breath in Shadow and Starfire fell from the heavens. It pierced the ground and split in two. Kilem wept when he recognized the blade. It belonged to Mihira. And his weeping didn't stop when he realized what was about to happen. Kale and Morgana were to become twin angels. Kale didn't hesitate to pick up one half of the broken blade. As she did so, feathered wings sprung from her shoulders. In that moment, Kale felt more connected to her mother than ever. She was certain this was a sign that she was alive, and she wanted her daughters to follow the same path as her. Morgana cautiously picked up the other half of the blade and joined Kale in her ascension. But while Kale embraced the new calling, Morgana resented her gifts. Her powers didn't exactly match her ideals. She wanted to protect people against pain, not to dish it out. But that ideal changed when their settlement was raided. Kilem found himself surrounded as the fighting spread. In that moment, Morgana rushed to shield him, burning the attackers to ash. Just like that, the twin angels saved countless lives, and the kingdom shaped in their image. Morgana and Kale became known as the winged protectors of Demacia. The people of the settlement believed that the girls had been blessed by the stars, destined to protect the newborn nation of Demacia from outsiders. These winged protectors became symbols of light and truth, and were revered by all. Kale fought in many battles, flying at the head of the growing militia and imbuing the weapons of the worthy with her own sanctified fire. But in time, Kale's pursuit of justice began to consume her. Seeing threats absolutely everywhere, outside or within their nation, she founded the Judicator Order to enforce the law. One of her followers, called Ronas, grew especially close to her faith. He was her champion that never failed her. But again, on the other side, there was also Morgana. While Morgana wouldn't tamper with Kale's new laws, she was much more forgiving. Sometimes there were mages and criminals who didn't want to cause pain. Sometimes people hurt each other in self-defense. Kale was far too extreme in her ideology to see the reasons behind these cases. But Morgana was willing to forgive those who wanted to atone for their crimes. This led to a new turning point. In time, Kale's order saw Morgana herself as part of the evil they fought against. But Kale could never brace herself to bring her justice on her own sister. So instead, Kale's champion Ronas decided to do what Kale could not. He approached Morgana and tried to imprison her. Unfortunately, death was the only possible outcome of their encounter, and Morgana was forced to shackle Ronas in dark flames. When Kale returned to the settlement, not only did she find Ronas dead, but people were rioting. It seems like the nation was divided. Some were blind with Kale's justice, but others saw the good Morgana spread around. But Kale could not tolerate this chaos. She swore to bring Ronas' killer to justice, and she summoned Divine Rain of Fire on the city. In Kale's eyes, she did it to cleanse the city of its sins. But it was obvious that she was affected by rage. Morgana had to act quickly. She shot up into the sky, raised her blade, and met Kale in close combat. Kale knew that if she was to purge darkness from mortal hearts, she had to start with her own sister. The two fought with equal force of clashing light and shadow. Every time their blades met, arcs of blinding light and burning darkness lashed down at the buildings beneath them, slowly reducing the city to a pile of rubble. It seemed certain that one of them would eventually win, but the fight was halted by their father's anguished cry. Kilem lay in the rubble, mortally wounded. Howling with grief, Morgana hurled her half of their mother's sword at Kale and plunged to the surface like a meteorite. She cradled her father, cursing their inheritance for the destruction around them. Kale silently landed near them. And Morgana demanded to know if the smiting of wicked mortals included Kilem, whose crime was stealing them away from their mother. Kale gave no answer, but soared into the heavens without looking back. What is interesting here is that from Kale's point of view, Kilem was a senseless victim of the violence that had overtaken the city that day, even though that doesn't seem to be the truth. So it seems that while Kale is calling down her justice on everyone who fits her criteria, she lies to herself when others get caught in the crossfire, giving her a false sense of justice. After this, Kale held the two halves of her mother's blade, and she vowed she would never again let mortal emotions rule her. Then she leapt back into the sky, soaring so high above the clouds, she could almost see Mount Targon beyond the horizon. There she would seek perfect celestial clarity. There she would stand at her mother's side, and fulfill her legacy as the aspect of justice. Though she has been absent from Demacia for many centuries, Kale's legend has inspired much of the kingdom's culture and law. 
Grand statues and icons of the Winged Protector give strength to the heart of every warrior who marches to illuminate the night and banish all shadows from their land. In times of strife and chaos, there are many who cling to the hope that Kale might eventually return and others who pray that such day will never come. Meanwhile, Morgana was on a different path. Her wings served as a constant reminder of her pain, so she tried to cut them from her flesh, but she couldn't find a blade strong enough to do so, which explains why her wings are messed up. So instead she bound them with iron chains, resolving instead to walk the world of mortals. Over the centuries her tale fell into myth, and the name Morgana was all but forgotten. To this day the people of Demacia celebrate the wings protector, but recall only the glory and truth of one sister, while Morgana's dark outburst and belief in personal redemption became the mysteries of the Veiled One. Through all of this, she still refuses to abandon those who would seek her aid. Bitter and betrayed, she bides her time in the kingdom's shadows, knowing with certainty that Kale's light will someday return to Runeterra, and all will face her judgment. As the magic begins to rise again, Morgana sees that dawn is nearly upon them. It is cool when you realize that the story of Kale and Morgana pretty much kickstarted the current situation in Demacia. Kale represented the pure justice ideology, which is something a lot of Demacians like to shout about. But Morgana stood on the other side. Morgana was protecting the mages and outcasts who didn't deserve to be kicked out. So the mage conflict of Demacia goes all the way back to ancient times. It is also cool when you realize how Kale's army originally fought. During battles, her most devoted soldiers had their blades enhanced by her light. She literally set their swords on celestial fire. This could potentially explain what's happening with Garen's ult. He calls upon the aspect of justice when he casts his ultimate. And with it, a holy blade of justice falls on his enemies. I am pretty sure this is a direct connection to Kale. It's not canon for the story, however. We have never seen Garen call upon any light in his lore. But at least it makes sense in the game now. The only thing that's kind of awkward is how did Demacia turn into this heavy anti-magic nation? Even though the story of Kale and Morgana happened many decades before the Kingdom of Demacia was properly built, the history of this place is still heavily tied to magic. Kale was a celestial being. She literally used magic to protect her people. So I wonder if Kale using her light magic to accidentally destroy the city was the key to reigniting the hatred towards magic. But if that's so, why do people still revere the angels? Why is Demacia building angelic wings everywhere if Kale is the one who destroyed their early nation? I feel like something is missing here. Or maybe I missed a detail somewhere. But either way, that is it for Kale and Morgana. It is a really cool piece of history that has much more information than I expected. I'm not entirely sure who wrote the story, but I have to say, it is really good. The fact that we don't know what happened to Mihira, the original vessel of the aspect of justice, is a nice window for future stories. I mean, we're pretty sure that she died because there was always only one vessel at a time. So if she split her power between Kale and Morgana, Mihira has to be dead. Which will be a nice surprise when Kale finally checks on her, because she believes that she is still alive. Oh, I really hope we get a story capturing that moment, because I am well invested in that storyline. But now, we have to travel north from Demacia, because next time we will have a look at Freljord, and it might blow you away. No, seriously, the next video is going to be really cool. Just avoid all Sejuani and Udir spoilers. And Volibear. <laughs> Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.